Art, a diverse range of human activities in creating visual, auditory, or performing artifacts or works. Art is a way of expressing the author's imaginative or technical skills intended to be appreciated for their beauty or emotional power. Street art is a perfect example of exhibiting this kind of power. It is created in public locations, outside of traditional venues, and often evokes awareness, especially in low-income neighborhoods. The term gained popularity in the 1980s during the graffiti boom. When I was growing up, when I was first doing this, um, if you even had a rattle can in your bag, you're getting chased by the cops. I mean, that's just the way that was going to happen. So you had to be careful about even having your having your cans in your bags. Um, a lot of the guys I was hanging out with when I was in my 20s were also skateboarders and graffiti artists. So if they saw you with either one, either cans or skateboard, um, the cops would hassle you. They would take away your skateboard. Sometimes they would break them right in front of you. Um, you know, confiscate your stuff, go through your gear, all kinds of things of that nature. You know, for the longest time, it's been vandalism. And then slowly but surely, you have people like Shepard Ferry, who um, did the uh, Andre the Giant has a posse sticker. He also did the Obama poster. Then you have other artists like Banksy, who's becoming world renowned for the works that he's doing um, in the street. So then uh, to capitalize on this as American industries you normally do, they start taking these uh, street artists who are basically an underground sub subculture and bring them to the mainstream, putting their work into galleries, uh, basically um, validating to the public that this is real art. And now, um, through a series of other events, um, and specifically in Baltimore, the Open Walls Baltimore um, program that, that happened a few years ago, um, is kind of bringing more and more attention to street artists and to pay them for their work and knowing that their work is actually considered artwork and not just vandalism and is a different style of artwork. So I think that's the, that's the nature of it now. It is, it is the new pop art. It's becoming popular and people are recognizing it. It puts it in people's faces. It's like, it's easy to put it on the internet. It's easy to say it on Twitter. It's easy to say it on Instagram. But if you put it on the side of a building, put it on a billboard, put it on a bus stop, it's tangible. It's something you can reach, something you can touch. It's something that you can't avoid. You're gonna drive past this piece of art or sign or whatever every single day, and you're gonna be like, huh, oh, Black Lives Matter. Do some research on it, whatever. You want to at least do some research on it or try to understand what, why everybody's saying Black Lives Matter. By drawing the attention of neighbors to abandoned and vacant properties, art students at Morgan State are using their skills to combat blight in Baltimore with multiple projects. There's a um, famous French street artist who goes by JR who won the TED Talks to you know, change, turn one of his projects into kind of an all-encompassing project for everyone. And this was called Inside Out. So he was known for kind of printing out portraits in different countries and putting them up around the community to remind people that, you know, you too are a part of this. And everybody has their own division. We actually have a couple of them in Baltimore that aren't related to Black Lives Matter. But, you know, Morgan's Visual Arts Department decided that we would contribute, but we were gonna say something with it. So we chose to do Inside Out with Black Lives Matter. First we started with the portraits and, you know, it's very dramatic lighting, dark background, the focus directly on our faces in the portraits. And there's a shadow of a fence or a gate to show, you know, kind of how stereotypes work. We're locked into these images. So some of us are frowning, some of us are sad, some of us are angry and screaming, but other of us are smiling and more relaxed because we're more than what people perceive us as black people. In the wake of the Baltimore riots of 2015, Street art has been just one of the biggest redemptions for the Baltimore community. Street art has generated $10 million for the arts community to transform the Station North Arts District. But how do Baltimoreans feel about this? I always thought it was very interesting to see uh, art, especially black art, um, on the walls uh, around the city of Baltimore. We live in a, in a city that has so many uh, uh, vacant homes and, and so many uh, uh, vacant lots. Uh, the city looks very desolate. And so in such a desert-like place, it's nice to find an artistic oasis from time to time. With the support of the community, street art has been 
and continues to be around. But how will it develop in the future? Hopefully it continues to blossom, not only just politically, but also just aesthetically, just to bring more beauty into a city. A lot of people don't think cities are very pretty. You see a lot of kind of same color buildings, but with a little bit of art, you know, it can brighten it up. I also kind of hope that it remains free and less controlled. You know, you can't legally <laughs> just paint on a wall, but when you get the permission of, you know, whoever's wall you're painting, because it's their wall, they kind of have input on what you put on there. So, you know, for example, if we want to do Black Lives Matter, maybe the wall we used didn't agree, we may not have been able to do this. So as long as street art remains a little autonomous, you still get to do what you want, then you can put out your message. So I hope it stays a little free.